Okay, say you want to uh, look at some Quechua data in GATE. Let's go to Wikipedia. There's um, articles in almost every language, so we can get started and, and see what uh, Quechua data might look like. Okay, so type in Quechua. Let's go to Quechua languages. Um, here's some information about Quechua languages. And I'm going to look for uh, the Quechua version of this page. Why not? So here's the other languages this page is available in. I could read it in Afrikaans if I wanted to, Catalan, uh, Danish, Spanish. So I'm going to look down in section Q for Quechua, and it's not there, right? But I happen to know, based on the first line, that it's also called um, Runa Simi. So let's look for Runa Simi. Okay, Runa Simi. So now we can see that the Wikipedia has changed into Quechua. It's got this introduction here. And here's the article about uh, Quechua Simi. So this looks pretty good. Why don't we just take this link? We could take any page in Quechua, really. Um, depending on what we want. But a lot of uh, pages I've noticed in Quechua are really just about the language anyway. So take that and let's go into gate and create a new document with that, that URL. Put that here. The encoding is going to be UTF-8. And let's call this Wikipedia Quechua. And say OK. All right, that's going to download that website. Um, we're going to have some markups based on that website itself. If we look in the document editor, mm, it's not done yet. So while that's running, I'm going to add some processing resources. <clears throat> Generally, when you're uh, working on a language that's not English, you want to check first in the plugins to see if something exists or just Google it. So, for example, here I could say gate uh, Quechua pipeline, see if anyone else has built something um, that I can reuse. And you're not usually going to find something like, example, in Quechua, let's see. Oh, no. So they, they are thinking of the wrong gate. And the wrong pipeline. Yeah, for some reason nowadays, uh, Google keeps looking for things that are rather, that are lacking one of the uh, search terms, and they seem perfectly happy to give you the results. So even though the first result is missing the word um, plugin, um, let's see, they're giving it to me anyway. So in this example, the, the document's completely missing the word Quechua, but they're still giving me that document as the most relevant, which is pretty frustrating. Yeah, so it, it, at first glance, of course, you have to look a little harder. It doesn't look like there's anything for gate. You also can look in here in the plugins. So the, this is the plugin window for gate. Um, if you look in here, sometimes you're going to find there's some resources for a language. So there are resources for Arabic, for Kubeno, Ch um, Chinese, Hindi, Romanian. Um, there are some resources in there. Nothing for Quechua yet, but we can make it. So this is the Wikipedia article. It's coming out as pure text. Of course, there's still the annotations for the HTML itself in there, um, which you can see once I open the annotations list and the annotation set. Okay. So if you look in the original markups,
you can see all of your um, HTML tags. And typically when I'm looking at Wikipedia pages, I generally just look at any kind of text that's from a paragraph because then I know that I'm gonna get possibly sentences um, more likely than other things. So that's obviously the table of contents right there. And I'm not really interested in analyzing that maybe. So here we go. So there we go, there's some paragraphs there. Um, so what you can do next is go into the processing resources, create a new document reset processing resource. You're also going to need a Unicode tokenizer. And you're going to want a pipeline to uh, run that. Let's just use a corpus pipeline. I'm going to open this, move my document resorter into the first position, then my tokenizer after. The tokenizer is going to go and cut up the text, basically on spaces. Um, that's what it's what the Unicode tokenizer does. It's a very generic tokenizer, which is good to start with because you don't want to make false assumptions about the document. Um, I'm going to make my corpus, put the corpus here. We can run it. It runs really quickly <clears throat> because not much is happening. So now um, if I hide my original markups, I now have tokens. It's going to take a second to find all the tokens and highlight them for me. Generally, if there's a lot of tokens, it's going to take a long time to show them. So what I want to show you now is once you have your Quechua document, you can start running some um, statistics on it to find out what kind of language Quechua is. Um, you can often kind of simulate discovering parts of speech by simply using uh, function versus content words. So often, in linguistics, we're going to look for something like a function word or a content word, and um, and the and just knowing that that's a content word will tell us that it's probably some sort of a predicate, perhaps, and that if it's a function word, then it's probably some sort of um, function like a verb or a preposition, usually preposition or a determiner. So if you go into your Groovy console, which I opened based on going to tools. Let's open the script extract words by suffix, which is inside the uh, Groovy and Gate folder in the repository. It's going to take a second to load. Okay. This document may be a bit long to run um, live. Might need to run it and then uh, show you the results.